So what now? Well, that's the question some are asking after the Crown Act died in the Texas House. Six News anchor Tahitian Moyes dives deeper into what it will take to move the Crown Act forward as the end of the 2021 legislative session grows near. House Bill 392 had bipartisan support, but time ran out for it to be reviewed before the deadline. However, similar legislation is being considered in the Senate. But if Senate Bill 77 fails, we may have to wait until 2023 for it to be brought up for a vote again. Braids, locks, and twists, all common hairstyles rocked by people of color. Hairstyles that would be protected under the Crown Act. I think ultimately the crown act it really does promote real authentic acceptance the crown act movement gained momentum across the country in 2019 following stories of black children facing discrimination and school suspensions on the basis of their natural hair it's hard to forget the story of houston area teen deandre arnold we can't be okay with this type of discrimination he was suspended from school last year and told he couldn't walk at his high school graduation unless he cut off his locks. It was the tipping point for State Representative Retta Bowers, who authored the Texas Crown Act alongside four co-authors and nearly 60 sponsors. We just can't be okay with knowing that people have been passed over for housing, uh, jobs, or in education when it comes to just basically how they wear their hair and how their hair uh, grows out of their heads. And recently, there's what happened to 11-year-old Troy ISD student Maddox Cozart. It's a lot, it's frustrating. I feel horrible for my son. Hope Cozart says her biracial son was forced to spend 11 consecutive days in in-school suspension. The district said his braided hairstyle violated school dress code. It's not just hair. Like, I get it. Some other kids were told to cut their hair as well. And y'all did that. That's fine. Because to y'all, hair is just hair. But in our home, it's how our children express themselves. It's part of their culture. Crown Act proponents say discrimination extends far beyond the classroom. Hair discrimination includes being fired, passed over for promotions, and even having offers of employment rescinded. Colleen City Councilwoman Jessica Gonzalez says she's had conversations with women of color all across the country on the topic of natural hair in the workplace. One woman who serves as a judge told Gonzalez her natural blown out hair was viewed as unprofessional. I just don't understand why that's even a even an issue at this point in 2021. But discrimination is common, according to a recent study by Dub. The study says black women's hair is 3.4 times as likely to be perceived as unprofessional versus white women's hair. Gonzalez says that's unfortunate. Well, our hair is beautiful and it's presentable and it comes in all shapes, styles, forms, and we can do so many different things with it. As for the fate of the Crown Act in Texas right now, despite it not being heard in the House, Representative Bauer says her team is still working on ways to get it passed. Some of the other thoughts that we've had are to try to amend other discrimination bills, um, putting some language in, and so we'll continue to search for those vehicles. She also mentioned trying to get the Crown Act passed in other jurisdictions, like on a city or county level. So my work is is going to continue with across the state, just trying to see um, if we can continue to build the momentum and and grow the foundation we've already laid. Currently, the Crown Act is law in nine states. Representative Bauer says her hope is to see Texas added to the list. It's legislation that is necessary. In Temple, Tahitia Moyes, 6 News. And federally, the Crown Act has passed in the U.S. House. It is now up to the Senate to take a vote.